years old when he was accused of being a witch and marked for death by his cannibal tribe in remote Papua. His incredible story captivated the nation 13 years ago. But then the Australian media moved on and that little boy was forgotten. Matt Doran set off on an epic journey back to the Stone Age to answer the question, whatever happened to Wawa? 60 Minutes packed up its gear, leaving Wawa behind. This is a pretty tough place. What are the chances that he'll survive? I would say pretty small. So, controversially, Channel 7's Today Tonight dispatched host Naomi Robson to Papua to launch a rescue operation. Of course, removing a child from his home, even for his own safety and with his family's blessing, is not something we took lightly. But our guide Cornelius Cambron had already successfully repatriated a 12-year-old boy and a young man. During regular visits to the combi, that guide, Cornelius Simbering, had become fond of Wawa. Wawa always followed me when I was there. Yeah. And at the time, uh, wherever I go, he follows me. It's just like a... Um, my own children like that. I'm trying to, I guess, put myself in Wawa's mind. Yeah. As a little boy then. Yeah, it's hard. He's on his own. He's hearing all these stories about the tribe, thinking he's evil and they maybe want yeah. to kill him. He just must have been terrified. Yeah. So we, we could see from his face, you know, from his eyes. He is like a... a afraid of uh, something. Very scared. Yeah, scary. Cornelius was desperate to get little Wawa away from the combine. And the family also is very, uh, in a situation of very fear, because uh, his older brother just killed like a one month, and every time we go, someone is going to help them. But local police found out that the Channel 7 crew was travelling on tourist visas. They were ordered out of the country. Will you still be able to use the money that we can raise to save Wawa? I will. Mean, I will. Mean, actually stockpiling arrows to protect Wawa. Yeah, to protect Wawa, yeah. Big, big ones. He explained to me that uh, I'm just uh, to be ready if uh, people are coming. So I have to protect uh, Wawa from other people. Cornelius knew there was no time to waste. He filmed every stage of the rescue operation. Wawa now lived an 18-hour trek from the nearest airstrip. And so began Wawa's incredible journey from his cannibal tribe in the remote Papuan jungle to a safe and modern haven thousands of kilometres away. In an extraordinary display of love and selflessness, Cornelius welcomed Wawa into his own home. Australia. My name is Wawa Kambongai. I'm from Papua. The boys. Hello, man. Hello. Wawa. Hello. <laughs> Matt, lovely to meet you. Bye. <laughs> is this a good handshake? Uh, How many? One, two, two three, three five hundred. Uh, Come here, give me a hug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I can't believe it's really you. These days, Wawa lives with Cornelius and the rest of his foster family in North Sumatra. I am very happy to be a part of the family. They have accepted me very well. He's my brother. There's nothing different between me and he. If I ask him to do something, he never say no. I'm a older brother, so 
She respect me. <laughs> Bustling Sumatran capital of Medan, Wawa has just started university. He's studying sports science and immersing himself in campus life. Cor, cool. how did you get the money to get Wawa out and to give him an education? Well, at the time, uh, I got support from the Channel 7 to have Wawa out from uh, this area and then, uh, and also support until the end of the uh, primary school and six years. So seven, uh, seven paid for, uh, I guess, Wawa's extraction, but also the first six years of his schooling. Yes, right. Wawa was given a second chance at life. What he plans to do with it is inspirational. This thoroughly modern young man is returning to the jungle. But this is more than a homecoming. It's a mission to change the hearts and minds of his people. Wawa, well, uh, this is a clan that wanted to kill and eat you. What makes you want to go back? Just to show them that now I am back. I'm becoming a man. When I was a child, you wanted to kill me, but now I return. You see, this is me. It is just beyond brave, Wawa. Is any part of you scared to go back? No, I am not scared. Jayapura, the provincial capital of Papua, Indonesia. It's the gateway to some of the most remote places on Earth. It's also the first stop on Wawa's homecoming mission. But before we head into the jungle, there's something I want to show him. Mum and Dad died suddenly. Wawa's uncle has brought him to this village to try to save him. This is the first time Wawa has seen the television reports that made him a household name in Australia. This was your home. Now the little boy sentenced to death by his cannibal tribe is a self-assured young man of 20. I can't quite believe that it was really me. Kor, what are you thinking and what are you feeling right now? Um, it's hard to say. Yeah, and... He said that he has like a thanks for the life, for a long life that I, uh, that I have right now, that he said. How much do you love him, Ko? Oh, very much. Yeah, very, very much. Watching his frightened younger self only strengthens Wawa's resolve to return home. This is my mission, to change my people for the future. Wow, you feel this is your life's purpose. That's my mission, to tell them about working together, living together, loving together, not to kill each other. The next morning, we are on our way flying over the spectacular Papuan highlands towards the tribal lands of the Combi. We touch down at a freshly mown airstrip in the tiny village of Wangamala. Wawa's uncle, Ilola, is the first to greet him. <laughs> they haven't seen each other for 13 years, not since Ilola stood by the little boy's side, guarding him with his stockpile of arrows. He is my nephew. He is like my son. I am so happy he has come back to us. 
Word has spread quickly that the little boy who fled his tribe as a six-year-old is coming home. <laughs> Uncles, aunts, cousins are all welcoming him. I feel like this, this auntie might love Wawa the most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wawa's older brother, Wilhelmus, and sister, Lapina, are also on their way to meet Wawa. They've been walking and canoeing for two days. Wawa is a near mythic figure here. The young man who went away and got a city education. You just will not believe who we found here. Brother and sister, Wawa's brother and sister, they haven't seen Wawa in a decade and a half almost. This is something very special. For Wilhelmus and Lapina, this is a long overdue reunion. How much have you missed him? Yeah, yeah. I always remember my brother Wawa. I prayed is always in my mind. Wow, uh, this is your family. <laughs> Are you okay? I thought I didn't have a brother anymore, but it's real. He is here now. Wilhelmus and Lapina are eager to join Wawa on his trek into the jungle. So too is younger brother Davy. But straight away, there's a problem. Davy is stopped on the outskirts of the village. He's forbidden from leaving because locals say he is a deadly sorcerer. A Devi as Swangi. Swangi is like a bad spirit, a high level of bad spirit. Uh, he can't go far away from this village. He's not allowed to leave this village. Yeah. Davy, the, the people here say that you're a sorcerer. Are you? Do you feel as though you are an evil spirit? No, no, I don't. A female relative breaks the impasse by vouching for Davy. So it's it's okay for us to keep going with Davy. Yeah, we have permission. Tidak apa, tidak apa dengan, uh, okay. Davey, Mama, tidak All right, we can stick together. Let's go. Foster dad Cornelius is a seasoned bushman, nearing 60. He's worked with and around the Combi for more than 25 years and is keenly aware of the risks that lay ahead. He is like a bad spirit. As Wawa's father, are you afraid for him going back into the jungle? <sighs> I'm not afraid because he's strong. He's strong, man. How strong is he? He's strong, I think. He's like a in, 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 in strong personality. Yeah, a strong personality. So... I am not afraid about that. Jin, what strikes me is not just how big this moment is for Wawa, but also for the Combi people. <laughs> I mean, the last time they saw him, they thought that the only option would be to kill him. So exactly what is he walking into now? Well, none of us know. And add to that that coming with us is Wawa's younger brother, Davy who they believe is the highest level sorcerer. Oh, 
has done its work. The combine are waiting for them. It's a moment we've been planning and dreading in equal measure. Wawa is face to face with his childhood tribe. 13 years ago, the Kombai people marked Wawa for death as a male witch. He has no idea how they'll react now he's returned. After a tense standoff, a miracle. <laughs> Wawa's aunties embrace him with this keening lament for all the lost years. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot to take in. All of a sudden, you have a huge family. How does that feel? Before, he feels like he's just alone. But now... Now it feels like you have a family. Yeah, a big family. Just happy. And he's keen to show the kids how to move the ball around. I can, I can see in your eyes, Wawa, you're going through a whole range of really deep and powerful emotions. What is it that you're feeling right now? Someday, I would like to make sure everyone in the village has an education and lives life in a good way. Wawa has great hopes for his people.